It sounds like a Democratic talking point, but now it's coming from a Democrat mayor in a big liberal city. Good evening, I'm Leland Vitter. At this hour, a majority of minority groups in America's largest city could be literally blocked from entering indoor venues in New York City when its vaccine mandate takes effect in a few weeks. Meanwhile, the Biden administration wants other cities to follow, and that caused the mayor of Boston to issue this stunning comparison. Take a listen. There's a long history in this country of people needing to show their papers, whether we're talking about uh, this from the standpoint of, uh, you know, as a way uh, to after during slavery, post slavery, uh, as recent as, you know, what the immigrant population has to go through here. Uh, we heard Trump with the birth certificate nonsense. Here, we want to make sure that we are not doing anything that would further create a barrier for residents of Boston or disproportionately impact BIPOC communities. Joining us now, Jason Nichols, professor at the University of Maryland who studies these things. Uh, professor, we appreciate you joining us. You think about the, the term vaccine passports are racist. It sounds like a Republican talking point is being used, but does the Democratic mayor of Boston have a point? Well, I think she does. I think her comparison to slavery is, is a little bit hyperbolic. I, I for personally don't like when people are always making comparisons to slavery or Nazism or the Holocaust. I think that those do us no good. But uh, the idea that people may be left out, uh, particularly African-American people, other people of color, may be left out by a vaccine passport is, you know, is valid. Real. Uh, yeah. We know that vaccine vaccination levels are lower amongst uh, African-American and Latino people. We've got some of the data to support that. This is specific to New York City. 69% of blacks, 58% of Latinos are unvaccinated. That means 69% of African-Americans, the vast majority, can't go to gyms, they can't eat out, they can't get into movie theaters. And you think about in the Bronx, where 50% of the population is unvaccinated, imagine being a business owner there. Yeah, I, I think my bigger concern, even than people being able, having access to, to eat or to uh, work out in a gym, is the idea that they may not be able to work in that gym or be able to work in that restaurant. And, you know, there are other populations, even undocumented populations, where people are afraid, you know, for many reasons to get vaccinated and may also... Uh, not be able to work, which can create another underclass. So I think that that's really my worry is more about the employment issue that could come from this. Uh, there are a lot of concerns. I think that Mayor de Blasio, I understand he may be doing this for prophylaxis uh, or prophylactic reasons, but I think that he's jumping the gun a little bit. New York City is not Florida right now. It's not Mrs. Uh, Alabama or Arkansas or Missouri. Uh, I think it's not necessarily one of the hot spots, and I, I think he may be jumping the gun and going a little far right now. As we look at that graphic about the minority populations that are unvaccinated, there was a recent poll that looked at it and said many people are more afraid of the vaccine than they are of COVID. How do you switch this in these minority communities? Well, I think it's going to take significant marketing. Uh, you know, particularly in New York City, I think you have access to uh, many health professionals who can go out and speak to those communities. Uh, you have many uh, celebrities and whoever else you need to market the vaccine to those communities and let them know. Because I think in New York City, if you talk to a lot of people, I'm originally from New York City, if you talk to a lot of African-American and Latino people, they know someone who has died of COVID. And I would ask them, uh, how many people do you know that have died of COVID? And then ask them, how many people do you know that have died from the vaccine? Hmm. And I think that there will be a significant difference in, in that. And I think that people need to uh, also encourage it through, you know, it's carrots and sticks. I think you have to uh, incentivize people to get vaccinated. Well, there's, there's raffles. There's lotteries going on here in Chicago. They've got Folks uh, raffling off iPads if you show up in low-income neighborhoods for a vaccine. You, all, you just said carrots and sticks. So at some point, the stick method is all right with you. 
Uh, I think, you know, once we start getting to a place where they're, for example, in Chicago, uh, once Chicago starts to look like public health is in serious danger and you start having uh, hospitals being overwhelmed, ICUs being overwhelmed mm -hmm. the way we saw last year, um, then I think, yes, then you have to go to the sticks. And that's where we went to uh, last year with the lockdowns and many of the things that we saw in the mask mandates. But right now, in much of the country, that is not the case. So I, I'm not necessarily in opposition to these kinds of measures if we're talking about Missouri, if we're talking about Alabama, um, if we're talking about Florida. But when we're talking about New York City and yeah. Chicago, those are not the hot spots right now. And, and those populations uh, generally are doing much better. Yeah. Ron DeSantis was pretty Sherman-esque uh, down in Florida that there would not be any vaccine ma mask mandates uh, down there or vaccine passports. Professor, a nuanced view, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Leland. All right. The White House does not have...